of whom shall I be afraid? In Proverbs, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. So if your parents or your teacher or whoever gives you some counseling, some instruction, you should listen, okay? That is the beginning of knowledge. But it's in the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. So fear the Lord and listen to those who are in authority over you. Proverbs 14, 26 says, In the fear of the Lord is strong confidence, and his children shall have a place of refuge. What that's saying is, God, if you become a Christian, God has you in the palm of his hand, and there's refuge there. And he's not going to let you get hurt in ways that are beyond your measure. Okay, he's going to be your shield and your strength. And lastly, let's look at this, Ecclesiastes 12, 13. Solomon, King Solomon, sums up all of the book of Ecclesiastes and says, let us hear the conclusion of the matter. Fear God and keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. And this is what we need to be thinking about is, we need to fear God, show reverence, honor him, praise him, and keep his commandments. And then we won't have to live in the fear of getting caught. All right, I keep coming back to that. Now, I mentioned we we're going to talk about the fear of dying because a lot of us do think about dying from time to time. And it's one of the most common fears to man because what's going to happen when I die? Because we're only here for a short time on this earth, okay? So we should not be um, worried about what's going to come when we die if we trust in the Lord and receive Him as our Lord and Savior. Um, but you don't have to have that fear if you're a child of God which means you have repented of your sins and put your faith in Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. So, dying physically only becomes a door in which we leave this earth and this body to be with God. And so that's nothing that we need to be afraid of. Because if we're a child of God, we're going to live forever. Maybe not on this earth, but we're going to live with forever with God. Now, but first you have to have faith in Jesus Christ. I keep saying the word faith. In Acts chapter 16, 31, it says, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. That's very simple. Just believe. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Well, there's a little bit more to that, so let's, let's look into that. But I'm going to say something here more about what Jesus said to two different women uh, in the Bible. Um, he said, Thy faith hath saved thee, go in peace. Now one of them was washing the feet of Jesus with her tears, and the other one wanted just to touch his garment, and she was going to be healed. And both of these women knew that if they could just be with Jesus, their faith uh, was very strong. And Jesus said, Thy faith hath healed thee. And they, he said, Go in peace. And then Romans 10, 17 so then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. So how do you hear the Word of God? Well, you're hearing it right now. Or you could come to church on Sundays and Wednesday nights to hear us teach the Word of God. Uh, reading the Word of God, many of us, uh, or many of you, have received a Bible which this church has given you over the years. And so if you read your Bible every day, you're hearing the Word of God. Now you're reading it, but you're hearing it. And since my youth... I have been taught how to read the Bible every night, every day, and it has blessed me over the years, and so I, I keep reading through the Bible, and I keep learning more and more, because we never stop learning. It's the Psalms and Proverbs and Ecclesiastes, the New Testament, the Old Testament, and we just, just keep reading it over and over again, and you will be blessed. You really will. And that has given me peace throughout my life. The overall peace comes from my faith in Jesus Christ, but my day-to-day -day peace, it comes from reading God's Word every day, which reminds me of God's peace. And Romans 5, 1 says, Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Now let's look at that word peace a little bit here. It's mentioned over 400 times in the Bible. And like I said, I was taught at an early age to read God's Word, the Bible, every day. And so this is where I get my strength and my peace. Psalm 29, 11, The Lord will give strength unto His people. The Lord will bless His people with peace. All right, The Lord is, will give strength to His people. But you have to be His people first. And so therefore you have to receive Christ as, his Lord, as your Lord and Savior. Psalm 34, 14, Depart from evil. Mm -hmm. 
stop doing wrong things, depart from evil and do good, seek peace and pursue it. And then where do we get that peace from? We get it from the Prince of Peace, Jesus Christ. In the book of Isaiah, in the Old Testament, it says, For unto us a child is born. We quote this scripture at Christmas time uh, every year. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given. The government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. There it is, that's speaking of Jesus Christ. And Isaiah 26, 3 also says, Thou will keep him in perfect peace, meaning God will keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on thee because he trusteth in thee. Meaning, if we keep our mind stayed on Jesus Christ, we read his word, follow what he commands us to do, and trust that he's going to watch over us, he will give us that perfect peace. Because he is the Prince of Peace. Isaiah also says, There is no peace, saith the Lord, unto the wicked. Meaning, if you're always doing wrong things, you're not going to have peace in your heart, because you're always going to fear that you're going to get caught. Jesus said to his disciples, Peace be unto you, peace I leave you, my peace I give you, not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. There Jesus is saying, I give you peace. All right? Paul, the last apostle of Jesus Christ, wrote letters to all kinds of people throughout all the world, uh, different groups here and different groups there. And he always opened up with, peace be unto you. He said, Romans 15, uh, 33 also says, Now the God of peace be with you all. That's a closing statement in the book of Romans. 1 Corinthians 1, 3, Grace be unto you and peace. But where does that peace come from? And peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Another one, For God is not the author of confusion, but of peace. Okay, so we need to think about that. If you're confused about a lot of things, go to the Lord and ask Him for wisdom. Ask Him to help you, because He is not a God of confusion. He is God of peace. Another one, Colossians 1.20, And having made peace through the blood of the cross, of His cross, Jesus' cross, by Him to reconcile all things to Himself. Okay, let me read that again. Having made peace through the blood of His cross, meaning Christ died for our sins. Jesus died because He wanted to save us. He, he wanted to pay the penalty for our sin because we are a sinful people. We do wrong things. And so we're going to learn here a little bit about that, about what we can do about that. And Hebrews 12, 14 says, Follow peace with all men in holiness, without which no man shall see the Lord. Now I ask you, boys and girls and parents, and all who may be watching, how do you obtain this peace? What do you think? How do you obtain this peace? Well, here is a simple way. And many of you know this verse. You've heard it a lot of times. Maybe you know it by heart. John 3.16 For God so loved the world. Think about that. For God so loved the world. That's everybody. He loves everybody that He gave His only begotten Son. That's Jesus Christ. And whoever believes in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. So you need to believe. We learned that earlier in, the, in one of the Scriptures. In Ephesians 2.8, Paul writes, For by grace are you saved through faith. That's faith in Jesus Christ, and not of yourselves. It is the gift of God. You can't work your way to heaven. It's a free gift. Okay? Now this matter of sin, uh, Romans 3.23 addresses it, for all have sinned. I said we're all sinners, we're born sinners, and there's no way that we can cleanse ourselves from this sin, because we've all come short of the glory of God, Romans 3.23, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Romans 6.23, so what is the result of sin? The result of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Now, this is very simple. Romans 10, 9 and 10 says that if we confess with our mouth the Lord Jesus Christ and shall believe in your heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. 
For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. See, it's not just something you have to think about. You have to believe and be able to express it. Okay? You have to be able to say, I believe. I am a child of God. All right? Confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus Christ. And you can confess that to one another, but really you've got to confess it to God. All right? Because He's the one that saves you. When you're ready to get saved and have this fascinating peace with God, you can pray this simple prayer. It is so simple. And it doesn't have to be exactly how I'm saying it. But it goes something like this. You can say simply, God, I know that I'm a sinner. I do wrong things. I know that the punishment for my sin is ultimately death. But I believe that Jesus paid the penalty for my sins on the cross. I believe he rose from the grave on the third day after he died on the cross and is now with you in heaven. Lord, I confess my sins to you and ask that you forgive me for all my sins. Please come into my life and be my Lord and Savior. Help me to repent of my sins and live for you from this day forward. In Jesus' name I pray. Now you can pray that prayer right where you're at right now. You don't have to be in church. You don't have to be anywhere else but right in your living room, your bedroom. And then when you do that, go tell somebody that you just got saved and be happy about it. Because I guarantee you, you will have the peace of God that passes all understanding. Now I want to leave a couple more verses with you. 2 Thessalonians 3.16 Now the Lord of peace himself give you peace always by all means. The Lord be with you all. And the peace of God, this is Philippians 4.7, one of my favorites, and the peace of God which passeth all understanding shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Now before I close, I want to leave you with the finish, uh, I need to finish the story about when I was down in Key West and I was on the boat and something was grabbing all my legs and I got into the boat really quick. That ended up being my dad's friend, so it wasn't a shark, but it sure scared me something I'll tell you what, if you're in the middle of nowhere, ocean land, and something grabs hold of your legs and you have no idea what it is, you're going to be just as scared as I was. But anyways, that's the conclusion of that story. I, I failed to tell you what that is, what the rest of that story was. Anyhow, let's close in a word of prayer. Our Father in Heaven, I thank you so much for allowing me to share your word with these, these good folks, uh, these boys and girls. And I pray that each and every one of them would think hard on, on their own lives and know that they need to get right with you and desire that peace that passes all understanding. Lord, I, I lift these folks up to you. I lift these children that come here on Wednesday night and all who will be listening. I pray that, they, that you would draw them near to you and that they would seek your face, confess their sins, and believe in their heart that Jesus Christ is their Lord and Savior and died for their sins on the cross and rose from the grave the third day and is seated with you and has won the victory over sin and death. Lord, I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you all for listening.